Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here and I am back on some Monster Hunter World Iceborne and today I want to show you guys my heavy bow gun builds that I like to use. Now, I'm not going to be showing elemental ammo or normal ammo. I never use those for the heavy bow gun. I know that both of them are actually pretty good now in Iceborne, but when I'm going to use a heavy bow gun, I'm going to be using what I feel like is just way superior on the heavy bow gun, which is Pierce sticky slash cluster but sticky in general the damage of the sticky heavy bow gun is just way superior at least the dps overall what you can get on the heavy bow gun is just so much better than the light bow gun although i do love the light bow gun as well and of course spread ammo that's the big one that everybody loves with the heavy bow gun so that's what we're going to be talking about today i'm going to start with the pierce ammo builds i'm going to show you two different ones One's going to be just pure offense, and it's really good, especially against certain monsters. And then the other one is going to be one that's more defensive, and that's really to be used against monsters where you can't really dodge them, like, effectively. Because with the heavy bow gun, your mobility is definitely limited, and with the Pierce heavy bow gun, you kind of have to dodge. If you want to go for, like, the most damage possible, you're going to have to learn how to dodge some monster with the heavy bow gun. But... For some monsters, that's just really not easy to do. So I'm going to show you the two different builds. But let's go ahead and get started with the Pierce Heavy Bow Gun. Now the best Pierce Heavy Bow Gun by far is the Safi Snipe Cannon. Now if you do not have this weapon, maybe you're on the PC and you don't have Safi Jiva yet. Or maybe you just missed out on getting it. And Safi Jiva is actually returning very soon. So you can actually farm up some of these weapons. But if you can get your hands on this and you want to make a Pierce Heavy Bowgun build, this is definitely the one you want to make. It is so good. But if you do not have it, you can always use the Toby Kodachi Heavy Bowgun. That's another really good Pierce Heavy Bowgun. But it's not nearly as good as this one because of a lot of reasons. But the first main reason why this one is so good is because of the Awakened Abilities. We are going to go for Pierce Capacity 3. I go for Slot Upgrade 3. That way I can put my Pierce Jewel into the gun itself. And I'm not really wasting my decoration slots. I hate putting a level 3 Jewel into a Slot 4. I just feel like that's such a waste. We have Recoil Suppressor, Nargakuma Essence, and Attack Increase 5. Now the reason why this one is so good is because we're able to take advantage of true spare shot from the Nargakuma armor and we can use the Safi armor as well. The Safi armor is going to heal us, it's going to give us bonus affinity, and it's just really really good armor overall. But also we're going to be able to take advantage of Resentment. And we can actually have level 5 Resentment. Resentment is the best attack adding skill in the entire game. So being able to constantly take advantage of it using the Safi armor is amazing. This build uses 5 Resentment, 3 Health Boost, 3 Free Element, 3 Crit Boost, 3 Weakness Exploit, 3 Divine Blessing. It has 2 Blight Resistance that comes from the armor, 2 Piercing Shots, 2 Agitator. It has Fortify on it and... I really don't need to mention the rest because it's just things that the armor will add. Now the armor for this is the Awakening Charm Level 3, the Nargakuma Helmet Beta, the Safi Chest Piece Beta, the Safi Gloves Beta, the Nargakuma Belt Beta, and the Safi Boots Beta. Now when it comes to the mods on this gun, the mods is also another thing that makes this gun so great. We are able to put 3 Reload Assist mods into this gun which is absolutely insane for our DPS. Not only do we have the true spare shot, but we're also able to reload our gun extremely quickly. So we are just non-stop shooting. So our DPS overall is just going to be much, much higher because of that. You can also take advantage, if you like, of the damage mods. If you want to get like long range damage up or close range damage up, you could do that. But I really kind of don't recommend doing that. It's kind of hard to take advantage of a lot of those damage mods with a Pierce Heavy Bow Gun. Now, the Pierce Gun will work really good against a lot of different monsters. Some better than others, but overall it does work really, really good against most of the monsters. Unfortunately, we do not have any shields in this, 
So we're going to have to dodge a lot of attacks. You have to learn how to dodge a lot of attacks. And that's actually pretty tricky against some monsters like Savage Devil Joe, Runer Nerdigante, Tyrex. Those are monsters that can absolutely destroy you. Even if you are trying to dodge them, it's just really, really hard to dodge them with a heavy bow gun. So I do have another build which is using shield mods and I use those if I am going to fight something tougher. And we really don't have to give up too much with our build to actually be able to use the shield. But having the three reload assist and having that super fast reload is so, so nice. Now when it comes to the decorations on this build, I'm going to let you look at it. I'm not going to like just go over every single one. You can see it for yourself. The main rare thing here that I have is actually the Resentment level 4 jewel I have in this. Everything else is like kind of whatever. Also, I need to say that the augmentations that you want to go for, for any type of softy armor build, you always go for pure affinity most of the time. That way, with your armor, you get 20% whenever you have your weapon draw. The softy weapons always have 5% on them. Plus with the affinity augmentation, that's 45% right there. If you add like attack 4 onto the build, that's 50% weakness exploit. That's going to give you another 50%, so you're at 100%. This build has 95% because we're not using attack 4 on this build. But we do have agitator level 2 on this, so that's going to also give us 5% if the monster is agitated. At least I think it's 5%. I have to actually double check that. I'm pretty sure it is. It is 5% if the monster is agitated. So we do have 100% on this. Now, like I said, when it comes to the decorations, you kind of have to work with what you have. So an example of this, and I'm going to pretty much go over this multiple times, is let's say you don't have Tenderizer Vitality, but you do have Tenderizer Protection. Well, then you can just kind of swap it up with what you have. Maybe you have some Resentment Vitalities or some extra ones. Just try to figure out what you have to try to make it work. But the main rare thing here I have is that resentment level 4. And everything else is not so bad. Although the pierce is actually pretty bad. I forgot about that one. I've seen a lot of people complain about the pierce jewel. Where they have said they've played for thousands of hours. And they haven't gotten the pierce jewel. For some reason the pierce jewel seems to be so rare. And I can say that I kind of agree with that. Only because I constantly see the Spread Jewel pop up when I'm playing Iceborne. And I rarely see the Pierce Jewel pop up. I'm not even sure how many of those I have. So that's a real bummer. But one nice thing about this build as well is that I am using Divine Blessing. So having that is a little bit of a safety net since we don't have shield. We have to dodge. And sometimes you're going to get hit. Because with a Heavy Bowgun your dodge is pretty bad at times. And if you do get hit, if that does kick in, that can really help save your life. So that's really nice. And also, this build can heal really, really good. So I like that as well. Alright, so now I'm going to show you the shield version of this build. This is the version of the build that I like to run if I am going against a monster I do not feel comfortable dodging. That way I can just block everything he throws at me for the most part. Now for the defensive version of this build, it's really not that different. The armor is exactly the same. The only difference is the charm and the custom mods. The custom mods, we have three shield mods in there and we do not have the reload assist. So we're going to have a slightly slower reload and our DPS overall would be a little bit hurt by that. But not too much to be honest. Now the charm I'm using is the Fury Charm level 4. That's going to give us 4 levels of resentment. Now on this build, we have 5 Resentment, we have 5 Guard, 3 Health Boost, 3 Free Element, we have 3 Crit Boost, 3 Weakness Exploit, 2 Piercing Shots, I have 3 Recovery Up, Fortify. I do not have Guard Up. That's something I have to kind of skip out on this build if I want to get Max Resentment. So I do have to dodge Unblockable Attacks. That is something about this build I want to put out there. But also, we do not have Divine Blessing anymore. I have to give that up as well. So hopefully we do not get hit, and hopefully we can block most of every attack that comes at us. Remember, this build is really meant for monsters that is really, really hard to dodge. And instead, we can just block them. Alright, so decoration-wise, 
the main thing here that I'm using, at least the main difference, is I am using some release jewels in this, and I'm also using iron wall jewels in this. I have one iron wall level one, I have two iron wall level fours in this, and I think that's about it. To be honest with you, this version of the build might be easier to make if you do not actually have the level four resentment jewel. So if that is the case, this might be the build you might want to rock. And this build is actually a lot more comfy than the other one just because you can block pretty much everything in the game besides unblockables. You have to dodge those attacks. Alrighty, so now let me actually shoot the dummy here in the training area to kind of show you like the damage. I'm going to use my other build, which is really more focused on damage. And you can kind of get the idea of how it works and also why the Pierce gun is actually super good. It's really, really good in Iceborne. Now, I do not actually have any buffs on right now. I do actually have a demon drug, I think. So I take that back. I do have demon drug on. But that is it. So we're going to equip our special scope. And we're going to go ahead and soften up a spot. One nice thing about having Wyvern Snipe is that you're able to actually soften up the monster a lot quicker. So a lot of times you can just get on the monster and soften it up to help you out. Because you want to soften up a lot of different parts of the monster so you can pierce right through the monster as much as you can. Now I want you to see this because with the Nargakuma True Spare Shot essence and also having the reload it's quite insane on how much we can shoot and look how fast that reload is our dps with this is pretty crazy so yeah you can really put on a lot of damage and just build it up and just shoot forever and then you just have to dodge anything coming at you normally my rule is anytime the monster is looking at me or if i feel like the monster is going to attack me i'll just dodge but if you use the other version of the build, you can block almost everything that is thrown at you. So now I'm going to show you Sticky slash Cluster. And the best part about Sticky is that it is completely universal. It works against every single monster. And another nice thing about the build I'm going to show, you can easily make this build right away once you have beaten the Iceborne campaign. Now when it comes to the Sticky Heavy Bowgun, the best one, in my opinion, by far, is the Zora Magnaris Heavy Bowgun. This has been my favorite Heavy Bowgun just overall for the longest time. Even in the base game, my favorite one was the Zora Magnaris Heavy Bowgun. I loved it for stickies. I loved it for all the extra ammo you get, plus the clusters. Back then, the Devil Joe was in competition with it for clusters and sticky. And the Devil Joe had a lot more raw, so it did more damage. So it was better, especially for clusters. And now, this one is in competition with another one, which I don't really understand why so many people use the Rajir Destroyer. Now, the build you can make with this, it's definitely a lot more comfy. You can easily put on Artillery 5, you can have Divine Blessing 5 on this build... But there are a lot of reasons why I do not like this one. DPS-wise, I don't think it's even close. The Zora Magdurus Heavy Bowgun can shoot so much faster. You can put on so many more stickies than you can with this one. Because this one has auto-reload, which is kind of a slow animation. Plus, whenever you are auto-reloading, you can easily be hit. If the monster decides to try to attack you in that moment, you're going to get hit. Now with the Zora, you have to actually manually reload it, but it is fairly quick, and you can choose when you're going to do it, when you feel like it's safe to actually reload your gun. Now with this, I use two recoil suppressors, I have two reload assists, and one shield. I don't have any guard on this, so when I get hit and I block, I do take some damage. Now, one thing about this build, this build is not actually running an insane amount of attack. I will show another version of this build, that can actually run attack 7 on it. But this one is actually going to be using 5 agitator, 3 health boost, 3 free element, 3 peak performance, 3 artillery, 3 tool specialist. I have the 3 recovery up. I have fortify on this. And I do have guard up 
when I have my mantle on, I have two slugger. Everything else is just added bonuses from the armor. Now the armor I am wearing, I have the Challenger Charm 4, I have the Nargakuma Helmet Alpha, the Pink Raytheon Chest Piece Beta, the Pink Raytheon Gauntlets Beta, the Nargakuma Belt Beta, the Nargakuma Greaves Alpha. Now this is using true spare shots, so we're able to just shoot and shoot and shoot, and it's really quick. It's really good with the clusters. Like I said, you can use the Rajir Destroyer, and with that you can use Artillery 5, but you do not have true spare shots. So with that one, you're generally just using stickies, and you're not going to really be able to really utilize clusters. Now for solo hunting, clusters are really good. In co-op, it's a little bit more complicated because you don't want to be knocking over all your melee allies. But if you are pretty good about aiming your clusters and you're aiming it in a spot where no one is attacking, you can get away with using clusters. And if you are getting really lucky with true spare shot and you're getting a lot of those clusters off, you are going to absolutely destroy monsters extremely quickly. Now let's talk about the decorations, but the first thing I will mention is the augmentations. This is a rarity 11 weapon, so it can actually have 8 slots on it. I have 2 attack increases and health regen. That is for the peak performance, obviously, and it will actually keep you healed up, which is nice. But the moment you get to the guiding lands, you can actually make this weapon. And once you have this weapon, then you can kind of make this build. This build is actually not too difficult to make at that point of the game. So that's actually really, really cool. Now, one thing I do also want to mention is the ammo that this gun gets because the ammo is insane. Of course, you have your sticky, you have your clusters, but you also have poison too, which right now with Safi Jiva being out, everyone is using blast weapons. You rarely see poison anymore. And because of that, if you're able to inflict poison in the hunt, and you can do this multiple times, you're going to give your team a lot of extra damage. So normally with a build like this, what we're doing is we are inflicting poison and then we are going for the stickies. At some point during the hunt, we're going to use the paralyze. And at some other point, we're going to use the sleep. You get free wall bang off of that. You get a lot of free damage. With the stickies, you're just getting a ton of KOs and you are able to really give your team a lot of free damage. And if you really want to, you could use the exhaust ammo. I never do that, but you could against monsters that can be exhausted. And that's just another way of getting a lot of free damage. Also, your wyvern ammo is extremely good as well with a gun like this. Now, you can see the decorations I have. For the most part, they're very basic. The shield jewel is probably the rarest thing here. Everything else is really not that rare. And like I said, you just have to figure out what you have and what you don't have. I would say maybe for really early on, the release slash vitality would actually be like a little bit tough. Now, if you are wondering why am I running pink Raytheon armor, I'm using it for the two piece. That will give you poison duration up and that will allow the poison to tick longer. And because of that, it just ups the damage. That's our main source of damage is poison plus the stickies. And if we can get away with it, we can use our clusters as well and our wyvern ammo but like I said, in co-op, you do want to be careful about that. Don't be that guy who just knocks over all your teammates. You're going to make a lot of people mad if you do that. So you really got to be precise. If you are going to use your Wyvern or your clusters, you need to aim it in a spot where no one is attacking. Because I hate getting knocked down by that. I hate it myself, so I never try to be that guy. And with this build, you're just able to give out so much free damage. So many knockouts. You get a free paralyze, you get a sleep off, wall bangs. It is awesome. Now, what's interesting about this build I'm about to show, this build is actually a build that I have not completed yet. Now, one thing I do want to say about the other build, you can technically put on attack six on that build if you had godlike decorations. If you had attack four decorations, you couldn't do that. But when you do do that, you actually end up losing your health boost. You become a real glass cannon. I don't really like that. I like to use the other build for co-op. I like to use it just to make it a little bit more comfy for myself. Now, this build is not obviously using the poison duration up, but it has five attack boosts. Now, if I had an attack 
level 4 decoration, I could get this up to attack 7. So that's really nice. Now the armor on this is kind of the same. The chest and the gauntlets are different though. The chest is the buff alpha, which came out with the Christmas events. And the Runer Nertigante beta gauntlets. And I have the Awakening Charm on as well. Now, one thing I should mention as well is that I am using the Glider Mantle and the Impact Mantle. I'm using them just because I'm able to put in extra decorations. And the Impact Mantle definitely helps with knocking out the monster a couple times, like really quickly, if you're using stickies. Now, you can see what I have on for my decorations here. But there's a lot of level 1 slots here. A ton. Because the buff alpha chest piece gives you three level 1 slots. And that was a really nice thing. Now, if I want to get the attack 7, I can replace the KO slash medicine jewel when it attack level 4 decoration. If I had one of those, I could get attack 7 on this. I am still using shield just because I want to be able to block unblockables. Like I said, when you block with this, you're going to take a lot of damage, a lot of chip damage, but you will generally survive, and then you're able to use a max potion if you need to, and heal yourself up. But yeah, 100%, I think that the Zora Magnus Heavy Bogan is just way better. The DPS is insane. So now, I do want to quickly demonstrate this. I'm going to show you like how this works. But, you know, to actually get the max damage, I need to eat for Feline Bombardier, which I haven't, and I also need to agitator to be kicked in so the damage is going to be a little bit less because i don't have those skills working right now in the training area all right so i am going to start with the sticky and one nice thing about this gun as well compared to the rajir destroyer is that this one also has wyvern snipe like i said this is a really nice team gun and with this i'm able to quickly soften up the monster to help my team out because when you're using stickies, you know, you don't really have to soften up the monster at all. And because of that, you just normally don't do it. But if you're playing in co-op, it is a nice thing to do for your allies, you know, to actually go ahead and soften up the monster to help them out for different spots. Now, as you can see, you know, we're able to really shoot this thing extremely quickly, just build up those stickies, and we have that true spare shot that can kick in. To allow us to get more stickies off and the damage is definitely pretty good especially when everything is kicked in if you eat for feline bombardier with the cluster bombs we can also get extremely lucky potentially and if we do we can get a bunch of these off and just get a ton of damage but normally when you start your hunt you always start like it said with the poison ammo you shoot this to get the poison on there you switch over to your stickies you start putting these on Oh, the monster falls down. Okay, now we go to clusters. Aim for a spot, if you are in co-op, where no one is attacking. And then go to town. And then just repeat that. I mean, look at that. We're getting so many true spare shot to proc there. But yeah, this build is extremely universal. It's going to work against literally everything. And you can make this build pretty early on at the end of the Iceborne campaign. So now I'm going to show you spread, which is everybody's favorite. I love it as well. Now my spread build, I really love it a lot. I think it's kind of perfect. Now the thing is, is that it isn't perfect because I do not have the right decorations to make it perfect. But I definitely think it is a combination of the best of two worlds. It's kind of comfy, but it's also really good offensively where I know you can make some crazy spread builds that are really good with insane damage, but I think the DPS of my build is on par with any of those builds, just because I'm able to utilize something that a lot of people actually skip out on. So, let's actually talk about the spread heavy bow gun. Now, when it comes to spread, you do have choices on which gun you want to use. I know a lot of people really like the Sticky and Zenogre Heavy Bow Gun. Now, it took me a while to figure out why is it that people like this one so much. The reason why is because it has Wyvern Snipe. It's a lot quicker and a lot easier to soften up the monster. So this is why this one is good if you were wondering why. But the Safi Burst Cannon is definitely a lot more comfy. So I definitely like it for that. 
Now the awakened abilities I have on this, I have attack increase 5, recoil suppressor, spread capability 3, I have slot upgrade 3, and Nargakuma essence. Now, the thing about this build, the reason why I like it so much, is because I'm able to actually use true spare shot, plus I have some decent offense. Initially, I did go out and make the Team Dark Side build that they showed off like right away. It was a comfy burst cannon build. I wanted to try that out and I liked it a lot. The only thing I didn't like about that build was it didn't have guard up and also it didn't have really any like attack increasing skills. So I wanted to actually try to make my own version of the build where it can be comfy but also have the attack increasing skills. And that's what I was able to do. Now the mods on this, you want to use close range up, three shields, and the special scope. I really sometimes hate the special scope because I can't really see the monster all that well. And if I can't see the monster, sometimes I don't know when the monster is attacking. But the special scope will add a ton of damage to your spread. So it is worth using. Now, for the augmentations, you want pure affinity because we're using softy armor. We're using three pieces of that. And the skills on this is 5 guard, 3 health boost, 3 free element, 3 crit boost, 3 weakness exploit, 3 divine blessing, 2 spread slash power, 2 resentment. But when we have our mantle on, we have 4 resentment. And if I actually had the right decorations with the glider mantle on, I can have 5 resentment which I definitely want to actually be able to do because that would really help out my DPS. I do think it would add at least one extra damage to every shot that I fire, and that would be crazy. The glider mantle is so good because you put it on, it lasts for three minutes, it has a two-minute recharge, so it is extremely good in that way. You almost always have it going. And we also have guard up on this as well. We have two recovery up with the mantle on. And the armor for this, we have the Ironside Charm level 5. We have the Nargakuma helmet. We have the Safi chest piece. We have the Safi gloves. We have the Nargakuma belt. And we have the Safi boots. Everything is beta. And we also are using the impact mantle with the glider mantle. Now, decoration wise, the main thing here is that with this... I, if I had another level 4 resentment jewel, I could put that into the glider mantle. And if I did that, then I could actually get the 5 resentment when I have the glider mantle on. And that would be epic. Now, unfortunately with this build, we have the spread level 3 jewel in that slot 4. I hate that. I feel like it's a waste. I wish they would have came out with pierce level 4 and spread level 4. I think that would have been a really good thing. I'm sure it would be extremely rare and everybody would complain about it, but it would have been nice to have them in the game because it would actually free up some slots and would make some of these builds a lot better. So it's unfortunate, but you can see my decorations on what I have. But, you know, the main thing about this build, why I like it so much, is that it has the guard, it's able to block pretty much everything, it has, like, decent damage on it because it has resentment, it has Safi armor, you're able to heal yourself, which is also really nice. So any type of chip damage you do receive, you're able to heal that up with the Safi armor. It has that Divine Blessing, though. That's just super, super nice. Now, just real quick, I want to show another build that's going to be a pure damage Safi Burst Cannon build that you can do if you are interested. But to do this, you would want to make another gun and not have the Nargakuma Essence on it. And instead, you can go for another attack increase, and that would give you even more damage. Now, the thing about this build, if you actually look at it, is that it has 5 resentment. It's all the time. It has 4 attack boosts, and you can actually get 2 extra attack boosts when you have your mantle on. The thing is, is that this build right now will hit for like 3 extra damage per pellet when I do the testing on it. But it doesn't have the true spare shot. And because it doesn't have true spare shot, that kind of is an issue for me. So I personally feel like my build is even better because it does have true spare shot. Although this one will hit harder, it's just not going to be able to shoot as much. And another thing too, in terms of just being comfy with your spread ammo, the less you have to reload, 
the less chance you have of actually getting hit. Because one of the main times you're going to get hit using spread ammo is when you are reloading. Anytime you're reloading, if the monster decides to attack you at that time, you're going to get hit. So it is definitely a problem. So when you have true spare shot, you're just not reloading as often and it's a lot safer that way. So that's another reason I really do like using true spare shot with the spread ammo. Alright, so let's actually go ahead and shoot this thing now. First thing I'm going to do is actually buff up. I already used the demon drug, so keep that in mind. I did eat, but I think I got an attack small from the meal. I didn't eat for attack large. But let me go ahead and put my glider mantle on because this build, I do rely on the mantle, you know. So the other builds, that's the main advantage that it has. If I don't have the mantle, then I only have two resentment, which that would probably drop my damage by at least two, maybe three a pellet. But the main thing here, the reason why I love it so much is because of the true spare shot. The DPS, I think, is better because I'm able to shoot a lot more often without having to reload. So that's really nice. But also, it's a lot safer. You know, one thing that happens to me a lot is I'll be using the spread and then I'll be out of ammo. But I'm like way too afraid to reload sometimes because I know the monster is going to hit me the moment I try to reload. So I'll wait until I have a really safe opportunity to reload and that just means I'm not shooting. And if I'm not shooting, my DPS is zero. So the less I have to reload, the better. That's just the way I feel about it. But I mean, yeah, the damage of spread is insane. It is so, so good. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I wanted to show off these builds just because I really do love the heavy bow gun a lot. I use it all the time. I have a ton of hunts with all of these builds. And what's really nice is that this kind of covers every monster in the game. The spread is really good against some monsters. It's just amazing. And the pierce is also extremely good against a lot of different monsters. But the sticky, that one is completely universal. That one works against everything. And in co-op, it is amazing. Because you're just able to knock out the monster, paralyze the monster, sleep the monster, poison the monster, exhaust the monster if you want to. It is insane on what that bowgun can do so overall that's probably my favorite one just because of what it does in co-op but i do have a lot of fun using pierce i also have a lot of fun using spread spread is probably my go-to for like a solo hunt by the way if i'm going to use heavy bowgun i'll probably use spread in a solo hunt it not i probably would use either the pierce shield build because i don't want to have to dodge the monster like crazy but also the cluster bombs are really strong. They're still really strong in this game. If you are getting the true spare shot to proc, you can absolutely destroy stuff with clusters. So that's also really nice. I'm not going to show any gameplay because I don't even know what I would want to show. So I'm going to kind of end it here. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe, but also click the bell. If you don't click the bell, it doesn't really mean anything if you subscribe, so click the bell. I do appreciate it. But that's going to do it for me, guys. I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day, and peace out.